Versatile, comfortable, very capable and awesome looking are some of the characteristics of the Ritchie Ascent and this video is about the process of how we assemble the bike ourselves. First we're going to see the components we are using and their prices, then the building process and at the end a review of the build. I'm Francisco, she's Suzanne and this is Bicycle Picnic, let's get into it. The components and their prices. The frame set. We made a full overview about the frame set and I'll put the link over here in case you want to check it out for more detailed information. This is the Riti Ascent and we bought it in 2022 for 1350 euros. The wheels. The frame can take 27.5 or 29 inches wheels. For this build we chose 29 inches because the bike will be mostly used on off-road touring, so relatively long distances on forest roads and double tracks. For this kind of cycling 29 inches wheels do a very good job because they have more inertia and roll better than smaller diameters. They are also more comfortable because they go over obstacles more easily. We built the components and built the wheels ourselves, which is not much cheaper than buying a new wheel set, but it does give you more freedom of choice. If you want to know more about wheel building, check out this link where I explain what are the advantages of building your own wheels. For this wheel set, these are the components we are using. Front hub is Shimano Dior MT410B, through axle on 15mm diameter and 110mm of hub spacing. This is a boost hub spacing. This hub costs about 20 euros. For the rear hub we are using a Shimano Dior MT400B, through axle on 12mm diameter and 148mm OLD, which is also a boost. We got it for 30 euros. The rims are Alex rims MD25. The diameter is 622mm. This is the rim diameter for 29 inches tires and the width is 25mm, which is perfect for tires that are between 47 and 60mm wide. So up to 2.4 inches according to uh, WTB and according to Schwalbe we could go up to 83 millimeters. So we have a wide range of options for tire widths. We got these rims for 60 euros and they are 545 grams which is pretty okay for the price. The spokes are Sapim Rays which are double butted stainless steel and they cost 64 euros for the two wheels. The total for the wheels is 168 euros. The tires. These are the Terravale Sparwood on 29 inch and 2.2 inches wide. They are the light and supple version. I've been using them on another bike and they are very supple and comfortable. At the same time they can be very versatile depending on the air pressure you put. They can be fast rolling on tarmac and gravel and even handle some technical stuff as long as the terrain is not too wet. I bought them for about 140 euros in 2020. The drivetrain. This bike is gonna be used mostly for off-road touring. So we need to have a good range of gears and at the same time we want to stay kind of low tech and reuse some material we already have. So we decided to go for a 2x9 drivetrain which is also very budget friendly. The only problem we have is that there is no 9 speed crankset compatible with the rear 148mm OLD wheel hub, also known as Boost. So the only crankset that could work for us is this 10 speeds compatible Shimano Dior M4100 B2 Boost compatible with 148mm OLD rear wheel hubs. As the rear hub is wider than usual, the crankset also needs to be wider to be able to keep a correct chain line. There is a small risk of using a 10-speed crankset on a 9-speed drivetrain but I've seen it working before, so we want to give it a try. For the crank set we paid 50 euros. The cassette. We are using this standard 9-speed Shimano cassette 11 to 34 teeth. We got it for 23 euros. 
the chain. We are using a Shimano Dior 9-speed compatible and we paid 18 euros for it. Rear derailleur. We are using a Shimano Dior 9-speed RDM591. The price was 54 euros from derailleur. We are using a Shimano Alivio 9 speeds compatible, the price was 19 euros. The shifters. They are 2x9 Shimano Dior and we had them from before. They cost about 40 euros. The brakes. We got entry level Shimano hydraulic brakes and I think it's gonna be fine because I know Suzanne really doesn't push too hard on the components in general. She's never too loaded or too aggressive when going downhill. So I think these brakes will work just fine for her. We paid 85 euros for the pair, the saddle. The saddle is the WTB Volt. It's a very comfortable mountain bike saddle with some padding to help with shocks. This saddle is 34 euros. The headset. The headset is integrated and fortunately it comes with the frame set. It's a Ricci WCS drop-in integrated. The grips. The grips are the very comfortable and ergonomic Ergon GP1 at 35 euros total price. The total price, considering all parts new, is 2096 euros, which is not cheap but not crazy expensive either. And also, by assembling the bike ourselves, we were able to choose from the beginning the components we wanted, the building process. We want this frame to last for a long time, so we are protecting it from the inside with fluid film frame protector. This is going to keep the steel rust free in case some water gets inside the frame. Set comes with the bike and it's very easy to install, except for the lower runner that goes on the crown of the fork. For that we had to get it installed at a professional bike shop. For cutting the hydraulic housing, we're gonna get help from a repair shop. We don't have the tools for that and also the system can lose a little bit of oil in the process, so they can directly do a quick refill if needed. The ride test. So why did I choose this bike? Well, first of all, there are multiple reasons, but let me start with aesthetics. I just love the look of this bike. The geometry is pretty, the details such as the welding is very nice, but also the color is just gorgeous. That earthy red orange is really beautiful, even though I'm not usually into orange, but it's just a really beautiful color. The second main reason why I chose it is because of the versatility. I can put fat tires, I can put 
thin tires, I can put drop bars, I can put flat bars, and it just fits well and allows me to have a bike that can have multiple purposes. And that's what I'm looking for because I don't want to own a ton of different bikes. The fit. I'm about 1 meter 65 and I'm very ha happy with the size M. I'm running a 70 millimeter stem and a flat bar and the position is perfect. We tested the fit with a 50 millimeter stem and the Ritchie Venture Max drop bars too and the position was really good as well. Comfort and suppleness. The bike feels really comfortable and supple. That's because of multiple reasons like the length of the chainstays and the triple butting of the tubes. You can check out the frame set overview video to learn more about that. The tires are also a major factor and an important role here and I currently have the Terravail Spar Wood on 29 inches and 2.2 inches wide and they're very light and supple and they're ideal for gravel roads of all sorts. So actually this is the first bike where I feel really confident off-road and on more technical terrain. The geometry of the bike is very stable. The 55mm spar wood tires have an excellent grip on dry terrain. The flat bars and the hydraulic brakes also give me a lot of confidence. Honestly, I, I do feel a lot more confident and this is giving me um, a lot of opportunity to go on roads that I wouldn't have before. I can efficiently and comfortably cover long distances on forest roads and double tracks. But the bike isn't slow or sluggish on tarmac and I love that. With the right tire pressure, it's still possible to do traditional touring on this bike. So you can really use it for bike packing or traditional touring. And again, that comes back to the point of versatility that I really was looking for. The drivetrain is working perfectly, even though we are using a nine speed drivetrain with a 10 speed crankset. And I haven't had any problems so far. As for the gear range, the 1134 cassette plus the 2636 crank set is giving me all the range I need. I've never had any trouble so far going uphill with that range of gears. So far, I'm super happy with the results of this build and we hope that this video is useful to you. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.